You're here right now at this moment because tomorrow you want to be somebody greater than the person you are today. You see yourself succeeding. You have a vision. You have a dream. Congratulations. You're already 10 steps ahead of 95% of the world. Imagine if Michael Jordan was scared of missing. He would have never taken a shot. Imagine if Steve Jobs was afraid of people not liking his product. There would be no iPhone. So ask yourself this. Do you want to be a person who fears failure or do you want to be a person who loves success? Which one? Because you're going to have to pick today. And I'll tell you one thing. One is a failure and one is a success. And if you love success, there is nothing that can stop you. All those negative things people say will mean nothing. They're going to talk about how only 1% make it to the top. Big deal. Want to know something else? Only 1% stick with that fitness program long enough to see results. Only 1% of nerds stick with that video game long enough to get good at it. Only 1% of relationships stick it out to the end. That doesn't mean you have a 1% chance. It just means you can't behave like the 99%. You'll have to do something better than giving up a month from now. Those are just numbers. You want to talk about numbers? Take a look around you and take a good look around you. Are you like 99% of the people around you? If you are, then you're in the wrong video, my friend. You have to love success just as much because that's what's going to allow you to get up and go for it. Being scared to fail won't do anything. In fact, when you love success and you start going for it, guess what happens? You're going to fail. You're going to fail 10 times, 100 times, maybe even a thousand times, but that's okay. Failure isn't permanent. Falling isn't permanent. You get right back up and keep going. And this time you're going to be stronger, wiser, and you'll be more driven than ever. And for every 10 failures, you'll land one success. You have to love success so much that you're willing to fail 10 times before you can succeed once. That's how a winner does it. But it took guts, it took an attitude. That's all it takes. That's all it takes to be successful is an attitude. And that's what our coach told us. He said, he said, hey, it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be hard. You're gonna go out there, you're gonna battle, you're gonna fight, you're gonna do it for one, you're gonna do it for one another. Do it for each other, you're gonna do it for yourself, you're gonna do it for us, and you're gonna go out with this win. And we believe that, we truly did. And it's, it's an awesome feeling. It's an awesome feeling when you truly believe that you're going to be successful. Regardless of the situation, regardless of the scoreboard, you're going to be successful because you put in all the time. This is that shot, can't land it. So it is going to be that retake scenario. Crims has the kit. I saw an old man. Had a hat, suspenders, and a cane. Was about 80 years old. This old man was barely walking. He could walk, but the cane helped a lot. He was struggling. So anyway, he was walking across the street and he ended up falling. So I went over to go help him. And he gets up, says thank you, and we introduce ourselves. Had a little conversation. Told me his name and I told him mine. His name was Robert, by the way. And right as he walked away, I told him, this is what I said. Robert, you should stay inside where it's safe, my friend. And Robert turns around and says to me, I love walking and I love walking way more than I'm afraid of falling. So I ask him, well, what about your safety? Don't you want to live? And he told me this. These are the exact words he said. He said this, solo, 
Living means doing what you love to do. And if I had to fall here and there to do what I want to do in life, then so be it. And he just walked away. Never saw him again. That was it. But that statement really had me thinking. And it had me thinking hard because I learned something that day. That's when I realized the true key to success. You see, I always thought if I could just fear the act of failing and if I fear it like crazy, I will succeed. Because I thought the fear would magically motivate me to get out there and start taking action. But after that day, uh uh, I realized something. I realized it's the love for success that will lead me to succeeding. So just imagine if Robert feared falling. Would he even start walking? Of course not. He wouldn't even do what he loved to do. He would sit at home and take no type of action. But he loved walking. Wasn't even scared to fall. It gave him life. That's what allowed him to get up and do it. He loved walking so much he was willing to fall 10 times a day just to do it. And you have to be the same. So the next time someone tells you, you're gonna fail, you know what you tell them? Tell them they're right. But you're not afraid to fail. You're not afraid to take action. You're not afraid to jump. You're gonna fail 10 times, but you know what? It's cool. Because on the 11th time, you'll succeed. <laughs> oh, you'll succeed, all right. And it'll feel good. And while you're over here living the life of your dreams and complete happiness, guess where they're going to be? That's right. They'll be failures, the real failures, over there where it's safe, scared to fail. I'm going to tell you something. You gotta have a tremendous work ethic to be successful in here. In other words, and you can relate to this, you gotta have a lot of dog in you. <laughs> you really do, man, if you wanna be successful, because it's, it's gonna be a lot of trying times. So you have to have a tremendous work ethic. But you got to have faith. Faith without works is dead. You hear it all the time. You go to church and you learn all these scriptures, but then you don't apply none of them to your life. You're looking at a man who has made the simple application of three or four scriptures and maxed them out to get here. I maxed out three, four scriptures to get here. I kid you not. I'll share them with you if you want to hear about them, but I maxed out three, four scriptures to get here. I'd love to tell you I'm the funniest person ever lived, but I ain't. Richard Pryor got that. I'd love to tell you I'm the greatest entertainer, but I ain't. Michael Jackson was that. I got all that, but they gone. So I probably am. But listen, man, but I, I gotta tell you something. If you could get a couple of things from me, if you could gather this piece of information. Albert Einstein said once, he said, imagination is everything. It's the preview to life's coming attractions. I want you to get this now. Imagination is everything. It's the preview to life's coming attractions. Because if you think about it, everything you have, everything we have in this world, somebody imagined it. It's your ima imagination is tremendous. Somebody was sitting on the phone one day talking with a cord to the wall and said, man, I wish I could just go outside with this phone. Everybody in here got a cell phone. Somebody imagined that. Somebody got tired of riding in a wagon cross country from slavery to freedom. Somebody said, I wish we had something that made these wheels move by themselves. We drive cars. People got tired of driving from New York to LA. Somebody said, I wish we could fly. We got airplanes. Imagination is everything. It's the preview to life's coming attractions. Your real life, the one God really got for you, is in your imagination. It is not in your current situation or your current paycheck. 
And if you've been living like that, you have then restricted yourself to a commonality that is really not yours. Because what really God got for you is really in your imagination.